Good luck. All right, so let's see. Um, yeah, let's play. I've done this before. Let's do this again. Um, man, this, this just catches my curiosity right now, so I'll play it. Perhaps it's not best. Oh, wow. Right. I forgot about that. Um, well, that's actually okay. Wonder what's up with this. Uh, one way or another, I'm going to learn something. See, does my overlook fail? Overlay look okay? I think it does. Uh, I have to calm down and remind myself this is not Shogi Wars. This is just a friendly uh, game. Um, and that I have time to think about my moves. And I just might need that time here. Because I am venturing into the wild blue yonder here. Um, I could... Hmm. It's not really clear where all my pieces belong in this situation. I've kind of committed where my king's going to end up, but... Um, hmm. My shape is not very flexible. So what do we do? What was it that on recent Shogi Saturdays and Sundays we've been learning? And can I apply any of that here, or am I just too curious about? So there is one shape that they call Urashino, or one opening strategy where this bishop supports the silver as it approaches the side. Um, but I'm not sure that's supposed to be this silver involved in that attack. Um, yeah, also, I don't really like the idea of playing a static rook here, because all my generals are moving to the right. So I probably want to play swinging rook. Um, the same time I met with the conundrum that if I played my rook to the center file, well, I'm probably going to do that. I should just do it and not keep hesitating about it, but this attack looks strong. What can I do? Hmm. Well, there is one thing I could do. Well, it's not smart. Um, hmm, yeah, my ship is not very flexible at all. All right, well, I do best when I'm curious about things. So I am curious what happens if I do this. So this helps me do my best. Um, it's probably unwise because probably my king is going to end up moving to the right. So probably I don't want to push this pawn. But um, on the other hand, I do best when I'm curious. So... 
uh, yeah, if my curiosity drives me to do something, it, that would be some indication that I'm doing something right. Uh, yeah, so this is what caught my curiosity here. Something doesn't look exactly right. I'd like to be able to open this way with the third file and the fourth file pawn and all of this. It looks very exciting, but I'm not sure it's right. Um, hmm. I am too curious. They do say curiosity kills the cat, but I feel like, I don't know, I have to learn something here. Uh, let's see, let's update the live stream title. Uh, Just in case folks are curious what's going on. Uh, so, yeah, and then I intended this. So I get that, like, I'm definitely playing with fire here. Uh, oh, that doesn't work. <laughs> okay. Um, now we panic, I guess. Like, what can I do? I mean, the bishop's not really in an attacking position. Hmm. I miss that the bishop can just protect this pawn. Um... Man, well, we're going to get some tactics here. Yeah, I have basically no patience at present, so I'm just going to attack. This is not smart, but, you know, I'm having a bit of fun. You're going to learn something. Um, but yeah, like, there is this obvious fork here. And I'd intended to meet that fork with this fork. And I just can't think right now. So possibly I'm in a lot of trouble, but this had my curiosity. I couldn't help myself. Um... So can I just take this pawn, I wonder? I mean, I'm hallucinating tactics all over the place here, and that's probably not good in terms of me winning this game. Um... Yeah, taking the pawn, like, I thought I was going to win. It very clearly does not win here to take the pawn, this pawn anyway. Um, I don't know, I guess I take this one. This looks kind of interesting in its own way. So, yeah, basically everything's hanging. Uh, so now I want to take the silver, unless I want to promote right there. And I probably do want to promote right there. But if I take the silver, I could get the knight like she got my knight. 
Oh, yeah. So if silver takes, knight takes, I take the bishop. So they, if I take with my silver, she has to recapture with the bishop, and I can capture the knight. I think that's... Well, okay, so there's this obvious knight drop in my king's face, which I probably care about, despite pretending not to care. Um... So... I guess I'll defend against this knight drop. And I recognize that there's tactics and my rook's kind of not in the best place, but I don't think that's the top priority to save the rook in this position with so many other things going on. So, yeah, it's nice to be able to target this pawn here. Um... Yeah, we'll protect against kibitzers just to be safe. But yeah, I'm thinking about taking the pawn, about promoting here directly, about taking this silver, about taking this bishop. Kind of expected that to happen, and my plan was silver takes silver after this. And... Somehow I thought I had her bishop trapped. Um, I don't. So after silver takes gold takes, silver takes gold, the bishop just runs away. And I... Can I pursue this? I'll have captured a silver and a gold general. I could drop a gold to chase. The bishop could run over this way. I'm oh, sorry, I could drop a, a gold general right there. If the bishop runs, I'm starting to pursue the king. Maybe that's okay. If I take the bishop right now, probably gold general takes, and I don't have any more tactics. Um, hmm. Oh, I see. No, actually, there is a follow-up here. So, yeah, we're going to play this pretty similar to the way I've been planning to do this. Oh, okay, I missed that. But Rook can take the pawn now and continue forking gold and dragon. So I'm down a knight, but that's probably fine. Um... Yeah, I kind of have to take here at this point. I'm just straight up down a knight. Um, but my bishop will be active, which doesn't really help me at all. For a second there, I panicked there and thought that this bishop was not protecting my dragon, and that was a scary thought. <laughs> um, yeah. I did give some thought to just exchanging my rook for this bishop, but then my bishop here never gets active. Hmm. Man, what am I even going to say when it comes time for post-game analysis? How I tried to see things, and just like a lot of the things I saw don't make sense. I don't know. Uh, we're going to take here. Yep, that's a fork. Um, that's definitely a fork. Um... Oh, I thought I could put the silver here and the bishop would defend it. This is not a promoted bishop. It doesn't defend sideways. Alright, so what do we do? 
Um, yeah, this is awkward. Oh, whew. when I saw this purple background, that's because I have a failure in one of my user styles that I just poured it to Vivaldi. This should be a green border, not a purple one. But for a second there, it looked like the red circle that pops up when you've done Nifu. And I thought I triple checked it. Indeed, there is no other pawn on this file, but my user style has a bug where it's negating the green border. So I need to fix that. Um... All right, so my plan was to drop the rook here. There could be a silver drop, and that's fine, probably. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Hopefully it's fine. Um, yeah, let's put the rook here. Unless I have a better place for it. Now, if I put it there, the silver drop hits the rook, so... This has got to be the most sensible place to put this, and... Oh. Okay, I didn't think that would happen. Um, this gold general is babysitting this bishop here. But my rook is trapped. Alright, so... I will retreat this bishop and try to attack her king. Um, and if my rook gets exchanged for this bishop, that's fine. I'm starting to think about which direction my king runs if it gets under attack. Um, I debated retreating the bishop further back, but, um, if it retreats too much, then I lose this immediate threat. And this immediate threat is kind of what justifies sacrificing this rook. But she's just going to run away and I don't have an attack. <laughs> so that's kind of sad. Um. So yeah. Now there's a silver drop hitting the rook threat and I just don't have anything. Um... Hmm. I mean, the other thing, which, again, it doesn't lead very far, but we could put this promotion threat out there, uh, understanding that I could take this bishop um, if the gold general moves forward. So, I don't expect that to get very far, because, like, I'm losing my rook, but, um, it's better than nothing, I guess. I get two pieces for my rook, which is not terrible. What is terrible is that my king is stranded, but fortunately, like, the silver doesn't really belong here. So... Yeah, I guess we just offer up the rook. I mean, what else can we do here? Let's take this, and then take the bishop, and threaten to take the silver. So now we've got a bishop in hand. She's got two rooks. I really like my rook, so I'm not <laughs> too elated about this, but... Um, we'll make do somehow. Yeah, no, I see that. Hopefully I'm fine. Oh, there's a check. That's a bit inconvenient. 
All right, let's put this down. And then she's going to attack my bishop, and I guess I'll attack the rook again. I'm trying not to lose all of my pieces here. Okay. Well, I have to move, well, either I sack the bishop, which just probably loses immediately, or I move my king and I'm dropping this advanced pawn and allowing a rook to land with tempo. Um, and allowing this dragon to escape my attack with tempo. Wait, no, there's no rook on no rook check on this rank. I have this rank. No, there is one rook check here. Otherwise, I have the rank covered, but I don't have this rook check covered. Um. Oh boy. Well. I'm about to enter Byoyomi, so that's my excuse for playing this move. Is it a good excuse? No. Um, so yeah, rook drop, and then rook takes knight, and then if I take this forking the dragons, then there's... Um, sacrifice this dragon up here on my bishop and then they take both of my golds so not a lot I can do here I just have to let this dragon into the corner because I failed to build a castle before attacking oh am I checkmated I didn't think things were that bad All right. Um, I think I got lucky. I think she was expecting king takes. All right, so now what? Oh, that does defend the knight. Um, this is awkward. Oh, I wish I had some awesome attack here. I don't have checkmate. Not for lack of effort, but... Um... Yeah, we'll go back to pursuing this attack against the king. Um, but yeah, there is one weak spot, which kind of ruins my entire castle. So I need to play with extreme care at this point. Oh, no. Come on, you... I don't think you're playing this. Uh, okay, I really, really, really didn't think you would do this move. That's very aggressive. Um, but I don't think it works. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I don't think that works. Wait, no, okay, if I rook drop, she could rook drop in response to this. I missed that. Um, hmm. OK, 
Okay, what do I do? I mean, I've been wanting to run my king away from this, and now I can protect against this rook drop. With my king. And escape all the attacks. Yeah, and no, I'm pretty sure I should just make a run for it. Let me boost the audio. Oh, the audio is as loud as it gets here. Huh. Okay. I mean, yes, that does win a gold general. All right. Well, we're going to exchange a lot of pieces right now, I think. Huh. I'm so confused. I think this is what I'm supposed to do here. Oh, my rook doesn't defend this direction. All right. Um. Still, I've got so many pieces attacking at once here. How could this be okay for her? Strange. Well, you got my curiosity. Let's find out. So I'm... I was thinking about king takes, and then dropping a gold general here. Um, which looks strong. I could also consider taking this gold. Oh man, this is too much. Oh wait, well, yeah, no, this gold I'm pretty sure this works. Or at least I'm pretty sure that if this doesn't work, I wouldn't be able to figure this out anyway. So. Um, either way, it's an interesting game. Right, so the king runs away and escapes the checks. But now I have a dragon chasing the king, and I have a gold general in hand. And I could obtain a silver whenever I need it. So, I think I'm okay. Then again, this is resembling a recent disaster I had in a recent, or a game I recently made a terrible blunder in. Where I more or less assumed exactly the same thing. So, but I have a mate in one threat. So hopefully I'm not too far off base this time. Despite being very far off base the last time I had a very similar attack. Um, but yeah, I've got a mate in one threat. I'm threatening also to take this silver. Um... Alright, I think I could just take the silver. Right now, it's not so simple. It wouldn't surprise me if there were. I actually had a mate in one somewhere here and just completely missed it. 
uh, check king goes this way, and then I drop my gold and it's mate. Is that right? This check, king either of these squares, gold drop mates. No, king up. Oh, wow. Okay. Good gravy. I can't read this out. This is too much to read. So... Wait, I could drop... I could move the rook first, and then drop the gold on the other side. How about that? Check. Even if she blocks, I have all these squares covered. This one... No. No, this works. Oof. That was tricky. Good game. Wow. Oh, what an aggressive game. Oh! Oh, does that work? Where's my mate? <laughs> That's cute. Um, Not sure I saw that. Yeah, interesting. Let me unzoom the board so we can have our chat here on the same platform that we're commentating. Unfortunately, if I zoom too many times, it might break the overlay. Ah. Yeah. Um. This opening was exciting. Yeah, so she's saying she's not so familiar with third foul rook. Uh, I have no idea how to play Ibisha. So this is uh this is like the perfect match. So yeah, I don't know how to defend slash attack and vice versa. Yeah, yeah, this is my idea. So, something we did is probably not right, but I can't figure out for life of me what it is. Uh Yeah, basically the more we learn the le the more we realize that we don't know stuff. Yeah, there's drops everywhere. Oh. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that could have done it. Jeez. Um... Yeah. <laughs> oh. So, wait, so I guess we have to do this, right? And gosh. Uh, I guess something like that. Well, I guess this isn't so great. Yeah. Oh shit. This this thing. Oops. Uh I already forgot about the silver. <laughs> Alright, well, yeah, it is late. This is true. Um yeah, that hurts a lot. So we missed that shot. I got away with this thing. Uh Again, I'd zoom in once more, but that might break everything. Because of these animated flags here. Something about this browser, or at least other browsers, tends to break when I zoom in too much. So we're stuck with the tiny pieces as long as we're commenting through this platform, which is probably the platform we should comment through. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know you're just supposed to say, oh, there's a positive side to this, and there's a negative side of this, and there's some balance in every position, but no, honestly, my position here is just bad. Um, yeah, no, she's played a very nice 
third foul rook attack. And I countered by trying to start with central file rook, and then I realized or remembered that central file, at least in theory, is not super strong against third file. Plus, I've not studied it enough, so I need to study more. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, for such an aggressive game, uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh. Uh. Oh, this bishop drop. Um. So maybe she should have knight six five straight away. Yeah. Um. Hmm. So you basically, you just need to get your king a little bit safer. Um. What was it that surprised me? Oh. Um. Yeah. Um. Yes, I couldn't really figure out the right way to castle here, but, uh, yeah. But if I start attacking too quickly, oh, maybe there's a problem here. I wonder what the problem could be. Uh, hmm. So, yeah, maybe. So, yeah, I've kind of left at a loss here for how to castle. Uh, right. Oh yes, I'd already played my king over to the corner. Oh. Uh, this is not... Oh, wait. <sighs> yeah, I was just so stunned that my king didn't immediately get blasted out of the game. Yeah.
I mean, possibly I missed something here. It is complicated, at least for me. But yeah, the the rook drop I think is useful to protect uh my uh bolt drop threat. Yeah, so I accidentally checkmated here, which is fortunate. Um, um, yeah, I'm not sure why we look at this slide. Like, the game line is the checkmate there, but... And plus, I should have, like, promoted the bishop like I had been thinking. Well, then the king might actually escape. So I just got lucky that... Uh, I mean, normally it looks like the king might have had some, some chance to escape, but, um, yeah, I just, so the, well, for whatever reason, I guess this bishop drop just was not the right defense. If there was a defense, and maybe there wasn't, um, I've been starting to look at other things like this pawn push, but I don't think it works, but I don't know. This is just really complicated. Yeah. So, I don't know, maybe there's this thing. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, well, I guess time usage. So I'm in Biyomi. Uh, she had a little time left over. Okay. Um, let's see, so there's that threat. Um, can we take here, perhaps? Hmm, maybe I'm too optimistic. Oh, that's mate. Okay. Ah, all right. So, okay, that's the most direct line. So, I guess that rules out this knight move. Um, hmm. I have two pieces attacking. Man don't know how to like either the rook or the bishop might be able to defend this somehow um yeah this is a mess i don't like this move but it seems necessary So as strong as this attack is, it looks like it takes an extra move to execute. And if it takes that move, then we can start running. Um, wait, that's not check. Um, because that's not a promotion. Oh! Oh, okay, this is kind of messy, isn't it? Wait, where is the gold general going to go? Okay, the gold general goes here. So I guess we have to run this way. Alright, so we still continue to be in check. Um... Still in check somehow. We're still in check. Um, is there a mate here? Okay, that's a check. It wouldn't surprise me if I'm missing, like I made it in one somehow. 
Uh, oh. Oh, that's clever. Yeah, that'll, that seems to do it. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, there's... Wait, hang on. I could take this, no? I missed that. Um... Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think we both missed that there. So we have to do this check instead. Um... But, like... Where does this continue? You need, uh, I need four pieces to do this attack, and I don't think I have four. Um, meanwhile, there's still the brinkmate threat. We're sacrificing another piece. Uh, what is this for? What's the occasion? Oh, well, that's clever. I'm trying to draw my king toward the silver general, I guess. So we're going to stay away from the silver because it looks scary. Oh, the bishop covers the... Okay. Where'd my beautiful checkmate go? I'm going to check you anyway. <laughs> um... Yeah. Yeah, that looks right. Something like this. I don't know. It's got to work somehow. Am I seriously out of pieces? Mm. Is there no way to make this work? Inquiring minds need to know. Um... There's got to be something. This doesn't seem right. Okay, yeah, something like this. Yeah. Yeah, that looks right. So, maybe somehow uh, this attempt to checkmate, well, this particular mating attempt might or might not fail. I don't know. Uh, pawn here. Oh! Yeah, that's a lot lighter of an attack, so it's much more likely to succeed. Um... That's pretty nice. So I guess we have to do this here. And then now that that's been placed... Oh! Okay, yeah, and as Lily was pointing out, there's a more complicated defense that she also has a refutation for. So, okay. Wow. Alright, so this attempt to escape the king slowly by opening up that square uh, it just fails. This, wait, oh. Um, maybe. Hmm, it's complicated, isn't it? Because we've run out of pawns. 
Right. Right, we have to lead in with this. Oh, is that mate? Yeah, that's mate. Wow. So that was Suma in 15 or something. That was crazy. So yeah, apparently... Um, yeah, whatever defensive idea I had doesn't quite cut it. Um, because I can't just ignore this gold. And yeah. This king gets chased all over the board. And made it. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty nuts. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, there's this too, but sure. So, that explains why my particular idea to just uh, try to run away with the king uh, doesn't quite work, because, uh, yeah, uh, Gota has just barely enough pieces to deliver the mate. Yeah. Ah, oh, so... I mean, there's not that many variations to it. The king doesn't... only has so many squares it can run to. Uh, but yeah, capturing that silver mid-variation gives the silver that's required to deliver the mate. So, um, yeah. Uh, I tend to start by looking at pawn drops first, then lances, knights, etc. If the pawn mates, uh, yeah. Otherwise, my attacks uh, tend to run out. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I think there is some method to the madness of looking at lighter piece drops. Well, if you keep heavy pieces in hand, uh, finding mates sometimes is easier. Which is ironic, given, like, anytime you open a Suma book or PDF or something like that, they'll have you just sacrifice the rook on move one of the Sume. But... In real gameplay, you want to save some of the heavy pieces because they're not particularly effective. Uh, really, the only heavy piece that you tends to be effective in Asuma is the gold general. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Everybody has their own method. Uh, I guess. Yeah, on their own, the heavy pieces struggle deliver it. Like, if you're trying to drive an attack with tempo, um, it can be useful to reserve some of the heavier pieces. And if you attack with lighter pieces, your opponent will tend to run away. Um, so, like, I forget if there was an example in the game of this or not. Um, 
but yeah, I tend to start using some of my lighter pieces to like hit a rook or hit the king or hit the bishop. I'm trying to pursue multiple targets at once with lighter pieces. And somehow I end up winning a tempo here or there because of that. Again, I'm not sure if this particular game featured an instance of a retreat that was forced by my lighter piece use, but probably not, because this game was pretty wild. Um, but at some of my other, like, teaching ladder games, you'll find examples of things like that. Yep, here a mate, there a mate, everywhere a mate, mate. Alright, um... Oh, that's cool. So yeah, I just walked into this fork threat, and we both missed it in the opening. I was obsessed with my own fork threat. Um, yeah, completely missed that. Um, but having miss us both missed some things. Oh, knight takes. Here is a variation. All right. Did I have anything planned against this? What was I thinking about? Um. Did I just completely miss this? Wow. Okay. Oh yeah, I guess that's fine. In chess, there's a concept known as a fallback variation. Um, where you say, like, well, worst case, I'll just do this, and I'll be okay. Um, oh, oh, wow. Um, I'm not so sure about this. As aggressive as that is, I probably need to play some defensive move here. Uh, so the idea is that I'm just gonna... Try to survive this, I guess. Um, so, yeah, this plugs the hole, I think. Other holes will quickly form, but... Um, Yeah, it's a sharp game. Hmm. Um, are there any tricks here, I wonder? Can I just do this? Does this just... Is it as crazy as it looks? Um, hmm. feel like there are two separate games going on here. Oh, uh, gosh. All right. Sure, I'll bite. Um, yeah, this is... <laughs> yeah. This goat, I'm more than willing to take this risk. That, like, yeah, there's some chance that Senta might get away with this, but it would surprise me. Um, yeah, that doesn't look real. Yeah, and then against this, I've been thinking, what about that? And this is perhaps a bit more real. Um, but this has got my curiosity.
Yeah. So I got a bit carried away here, I think is our conclusion. That, like, very unlikely that I survive this, but if I do, how cool would it be? Um, but, yeah, it doesn't look likely that I serve. Oh, well. Ha. Yeah. It doesn't look likely that I survive this. Yeah. Probably I fall for all of this every time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, um... Oh, well, maybe that's okay. Oh, dang! Wow. Yeah, even in the analysis I'm losing, that's pretty funny. So I have to play something like this instead. Or rather, I mean, I could have taken this, maybe, but this is probably the safer way to approach the position. Because this dragon's not right next to my king. Um, but, yeah, this is speculative at any rate. Um, I wonder... I'm probably dead. Probably very dead. But if I'm not, then what's going on? Um, hmm. Yeah. I think either way, my position's in some pretty serious trouble. Um, I'm not even sure I understand the pawn drop. My king is going to run anyway. Oh! Okay, well that's a cool move. That's another cool move. Wow. Dang! That is really clever. Uh, right, so I have to run this way, and then there's that, and I made it. Yeah, so my attack is just much too aggressive. Um, yeah, even in this analysis, like, this is the other thing during the game I was thinking about is this crazy go to attack that just doesn't lead anywhere. Yeah. Four pieces to mate. I only have three. So I need four. I've got three. My attack just does not stand at all this way. So, I think that's the lesson. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess. Right. Yeah, the saying is that if you have four attacking pieces, the attack never runs out. Um, and I definitely do not have four. So... My attack just instantly runs out. Um, okay, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I could take this way, and I'm 
My attack runs out a different way. That's pretty funny to see my king all the way up there. Oh, only... It's not made at least. Yeah, that's true. That's not checkmate. Mm hmm Yep. Yep, you get the silver general. It wouldn't surprise me if, like, there's mates all over the place here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Just smile and nod. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like, probably don't need to be doing this. There's probably some way to make this king here. Um, I'm trying to imagine how, but like. Is there not a mate? Um. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. So. It, it seems a bit too convenient. Oh! Well, okay, yeah. The running king does block the bishop. Yeah. <laughs> so my attack and the running king are just like super, super unsound here. Super ultra mega unsound to end up with my king running like this. Which is why I consider the other direction. But yeah, here, this is something. Oh, hey, look, we got escape artist's attention. Check that out. <laughs> uh, how about we take that? Sorry. I've not been following the Twitch chat very well. Um, yeah, you're suggesting, like, Bishop takes Knight earlier. Basically, I, what I figure is that, like, if I'm not checkmating in this opening, I'm pretty busted. But yeah, if I want to, like, not get mated, um, I do need to resort to measures where I give up material. Uh, although that does introduce a mate threat. So, yeah. Um, I guess we could take it. Sure. Uh, so this is kind of fun. All right. Oh, he's got to prepare for the International Shogi Federation tournament. Oh. Wow. Yeah, I don't know when that is. Ah. It's hard to play on Saturday, as he has to work, but yeah, hopefully, um, whenever that ends up to being scheduled for, hopefully it goes well. Yeah, so I missed the comment about taking the night, but, um, uh, that's probably fine for me. Like a free, well, is it really free? I don't know. Imagine playing while at the office. Yeah, that sounds difficult. Um. Okay, yeah, now we're talking. We're using light pieces here. Uh, 
Oh, my king is in so much trouble here, isn't it? Well, is it? I wonder. Yeah, my king is running all over the place. But I guess the key point is that the knight drop might not be... Oh, gosh. Yeah, I don't know what we do here. This is all complicated. Um... Oh yeah, that does it. <sighs> Probably. Because uh, she does have a knight in hand. Oh, there's this too. Yeah, gosh. Well. Hmm. Yeah, admittedly, I'm not putting on the best defense, but looks like I'm like super ultra mega checkmated every possible way. Or at least he, she. Like, my attack runs out and my king is still exposed. So, yeah, this crazy thought I had about this other way I could try to attack just completely peters out to nothing. Um, that was fun to look at. I think this just means I've been playing too much Shogi Wars and too much fast games of Shogi. Um, that, well, also the reason I went for something so aggressive is because it's extremely late at night and I basically had no patience, so... I wanted something that would be exciting. And we got something exciting, but I'm like super checkmated here. Um. Yeah, I'm very, very checkmated. Yeah, I have to use the silver there, of course, but there's no escape. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I'll have to study up on... I'll have to find some way... Like, I could play Third Fall against Third Fall Rook. Um, I'll have to find something that I'm content with. Because in general, I just tend to get blown out in the opening. Because I... No matter how much I study, I don't retain it. And every time I switch up my opening... It, the next thing I play goes poorly. Um, yeah. On the other hand, because I keep switching things up, that exposes me to a lot of new ideas. So it's not all bad. But I can't expect to win this way. And it's fine if my object is, like, say it's really late at night, and I don't really care one way or another about winning the game. If I just want a game that is a blowout one way or the other so I can learn something. Um, yeah, and this is probably a reasonable way to do it, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've played a variety of openings. Uh, first I tried Ibisha, then fourth Foul Rook, then uh, Opposing Rook. Third file, 
now playing Central File. Uh, let's see. The Yoko Fudori's. Let's see, is that the bishop? I don't remember. I remember Fu means pawn. Uh, Yoko Fudori. Oh, the side pawn picker thing. Uh, I've lost on both sides of that opening. Um, yeah, I just, for whatever reason, I tend to get blown out here on both sides. Um, usually I get greedy and take too many pawns. Um, so, yeah. Uh, it's almost 1 a.m. here. I can't play. But yeah, uh, we've been analyzing this game. Impressive duration. Um, how many plays go to here? <laughs> Against this, this king move, I guess, secures... It's, I guess, a really fast way of building a castle out of some kind of material. Um, yeah, the king can cover a lot of squares in one turn. Um, at any rate, yeah, it sounds like we're switching subjects here. So for those who are here for the original game analysis, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy whatever the heck we're going to analyze next. I don't know how long that'll go for, but we did make a best effort at recapping that game and found um, that, yeah, I missed at least one or two big tactics in the opening that would have cost me either allowing her to promote her rook or would have had to sacrifice a silver or even more and while also not having any way to s safely castle my king. So, um, yeah, I guess the moral of the story is, like, I started to play that central pawn against the third foul rook, and then I remembered that that was an exchange that I've never been content with in the past. I tried to bring out my left silver and bishop the same way you would do with the Urashino opening and um, I was just down tempy doing it. Um, but yeah. I pushed my rook pawn too quickly I suppose. That's where I lost my tempi. Or I can't just play like Urashino the same way I would, would play a bishop or Ibisha. I can't push the rook pawn and move my bishop and move my left silver and expect a castle in the first five moves or something. I have to, like, stay flexible and not commit to some hyper-aggressive attack right from the outset. I think that's kind of the moral of the story. Although that was a pretty curious game. But yeah, I think that summarizes the game and feel free to stick around as we analyze whatever it is we're analyzing next but i don't know how long this is going to go on for so hope you enjoyed Yeah, we can analyze whatever we want to analyze here. I don't really care one way or the other. It's just uh, as we approach the witching hour, um, 
I do want to at least wrap up the video. And I think we've done that in some sensible way. Okay, yeah, yeah. Could build this castle, too. Right. Oh, wow, that's a lot of interesting stuff that could be done. Yeah, so since Static Rooker Ibisha was, like, um, one of my first openings, I never really completely understood this. But it makes sense. It's just, I have, like, not very much experience other than as a complete beginner playing this. But, yeah, I guess that that's a reasonable shape. Um, yeah, I could see that. Right, then there's all this stuff in the main line. Um, uh, yeah, I expected this. Probably you're right that this is what you should be doing because this activates your pieces, and I don't really know what I can do against it. Um, this is what had me super confused and concerned and curious. Um, normally I would... Oh. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure Like if this retreat helps you at all here. Because now I claim most of this file. Um... But, oh, okay, I guess my pawn is extremely exposed here. So... I don't know, like, if this is playable for me or not. This is what I was trying to figure out in our game. Yeah, and then I guess I have to, like, castle this way or something. And I have very little idea what I'm doing now. <laughs> um, yeah, so we bring up these generals in some order. Um, oh, I see, and then, okay, you're going to build this castle. I'll try to strike this. Um, ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I missed my chance to attack here, and this gets very difficult for me. Yeah, I hadn't expected that because normally when I get this um, pawn wedged all the way up here, this king isn't so safely tucked in the corner. But, uh, right, of course, Anaguba makes a lot of sense. And I just can't build an equally hard castle because all my pieces are scattered all over the place. So, it would be difficult for me to muster a very strong attack while also not losing my king. Yeah, I've almost certainly missed my chance somewhere here. Yeah, I'm in trouble. Yeah, this is very good for um, Senta. Yeah, 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 I guess. Yeah. 
Hacking is so unsafe. It's just not gonna end well. <laughs> like, uh, mm, that's a that's a matter of opinion. You absolutely disagree. Well, I don't. What? Uh, okay. Yes. No. That's what I'm saying. But you absolutely disagree, and Lily disagrees. So. I mean, it's, it's an okay castle. Um, I guess I just need to study Suma a lot more and get much better at um, that. Because somehow, whenever I attack that particular castle, things don't go well. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I just need to get a lot better at this Asuma stuff. Lately, uh, I don't know. The more and more I see this Anaguma thing, like, the players who play it obviously are very skilled players, but also it looks like a tremendously hard castle to break. The disadvantage of playing it is that you're committing three... Well, I'm sorry, with three-piece Sanaguma, you're committing three generals that can't do anything else other than just hang out defending the king. But once pieces start exchanging, things get pretty crazy. So, uh, yeah, I have to get better at this Yosa approaching the king or the castle and then the actual endgame. Yeah, well, I guess on the other hand, like, I don't do very well defending this particular castle or attacking it either. Um, I did have to ask for, and we did find some videos about how to attack Boat Castle. And I understand this is not Boat Castle, this is something slightly different, but still. Um, yeah, this particular shape I'm not so familiar with, the one that... Gota's using here. But, yeah, that makes sense. I just have fared much better playing Anaguma than playing other castles. But I should get more familiar with other ones. If for no other purpose than being able to collect the Shogi Wars avatars for all the castles. But more seriously, to just broaden my skill set a bit. Um, oh, right, because if that gold needs that tempo here, I can at least pick up a lance. So I have at least a lance for my troubles, but jeez. Um, not even sure I want to pick that up, but... Okay, that's aggressive, but yeah. Stuff like this is possible, too. Yeah. Uh, this makes a lot more sense. It's a balanced game. Despite me believing or thinking or whatever otherwise. So now we're demonstrating that Anaguma does not, in fact, always win. And that's true. Um, oh, that's clever. That is an interesting way to build a castle. Then again, a gold general on the top row of the board is very heavy. Um, 
it can be useful in extreme situations, but usually you don't see a gold trapped that way. But yeah, that was a clever way of trapping it. But yeah, this uh, this manner of play looks far more sensible. Um, this particular bishop gold gold silver shape it's pretty resilient at least in cases where I've failed to attack it and I've complained about how resilient it is it's pretty resilient um, so yeah I do still like Anaguma quite a lot as a castle it just takes a ton of time to set up but once it's set up it is quite heavy and uh, it could be a bit over concentrated but tends to be quite effective anyway uh, at least once pieces start exchanging Yeah, because it's difficult with these pawns aligned this way and these generals aligned this way. It's hard to strike at the side of this castle. So, what can you do? There's always resources. Like, here, the weakness is the square that's only defended by the king. The other weakness is the base of this castle that's also only defended by the king. But it's difficult to marshal the forces to strike both of these points at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, super wide on Aguma. That's kind of clever with the lance right there. Uh, on the other hand, the wider it is, the more targets there could potentially be. Yeah. That's a fun shape. But yeah, there's a lot of targets with a wider castle. Um, I'm noticing that Senta's running out of pieces in hand. Uh, this night drop is a bit far away. Mm. <laughs> yeah, this, this might be a bit much. I think I put too much value into a particular castle name, but really what matters is the safety of the king. Yeah, like I said, I as much as I've been trying to do Suma Shogi, like endgame checkmate puzzles, I've been doing this on Lee Shogi and increasing my rating there. Uh, I just have to practice it a lot more than I already do practice it, which is not very much. But yeah, I need to, as I get better at checkmating, and as I stop missing all these freaking Maiden ones, like every single time I do a Shogi video, I'm always missing a Maiden one. It just happens so routinely. So if I could get better at finding the Maiden ones and the Maiden threes and Mates in five and seven and nine and such, you know, I would probably at some point um, be able to attack with a little bit of confidence instead of just pretending to have confidence. Like, when I have very overwhelming force there, I'm not at a loss. But usually I'm at a loss trying to find some way to attack. The Brave King doesn't need a castle. Yeah, Mipha's watched all of my videos, right? No. <laughs> he knows that I don't castle. 
cast legs for chumps. No, I, I'm kidding. But um, yeah, you'll find a lot of videos or a lot of uh, live streams here where I've failed to castle properly. And my king goes on many a fantastic adventure. Seeing the countryside. Greeting all the uh, generals and folks from both armies. And sometimes actually surviving. But only after the opponent makes some huge blunder. So that's something in chess. I don't know. I've been making more and more blunder-based games. I've been playing too much bullet and blitz and chess. Even when I play two minute with one second increment uh, bullet, or I play three minute with two second increment blitz, my opponents still make huge blunders, and I just need to slow down the clock and start playing better games for that. On the other hand, for Shogi, slowing down the clock seems... Well, it has some effect, but not as profound an effect for whatever reason. Well, I guess one reason is because, like, I'm always pushing the envelope trying to do ridiculously aggressive attacks and forgetting to put my king to safety. Uh, but yeah, two just missing forks and other threats and such. So... Anyway, not sure what more I could say. Anaguma's a castle that works extremely well in amateur play, but um, I guess it's strong amateur levels, or I guess it's amateur levels beyond one don. Um, we shouldn't say that it just is OP. You actually have to play it well. And um, you have to get the right pieces exchanged to be able to start in a lasting attack with Anaguma. Otherwise, in theory, you could gradually get your pieces picked off one by one. But uh, so either Anaguma could run out of pieces, which seems very unlikely, or more likely, they get subject to some rapid attack, or just otherwise are unprepared for some particular very precise attack. That at levels below Tudan doesn't seem to happen. Maybe I should look at more games before jumping to conclusions, but... Yeah, uh, Anaguma seems like a strong castle. But there are a lot of strong castles out there. Even though I have basically no experience and can't really speak to that, or just are. It's a great situational castle. <laughs> yeah. Instant win. Hmm. I'll have to test my theory. Maybe I'll bring it to the teaching ladder at some point. I'm a bit busy this week's this week, but maybe some future week we could test that theory. See whether or not it survives. Um But yeah, it seems like I know like every castle is uh useful or rather it depends on what your opponent's doing. That influences your choice of how you defend, and uh, likewise how your opponent's defending affects your attack, and like there's this balance and yin and yang and all of this. There is no castle that's strictly superior to all the rest. 
Um, except, of course, for the duck leg. Um, yeah. Ahiro Gakuen is strictly superior to them all. But I just, I'm joking. But let's see. So if there were Invincible Castle, yeah, it'd be a boring game. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh yeah, that castle. I remember that one. I think at some point Iraq had played something similar to this. Yeah, that's a shape. That's definitely a shape. Is it one to remember? Nah, but it's a shape. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, the sweet. Here we are. Yeah, the ultimate situational castle. <laughs> there we go. The flying V. It's a beautiful. Yeah. Uh, it's possible. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot going on there. Try not to unpack it all at once. Oh, oh, that's... okay. I see we have a very specific shape in mind. I guess what you were trying to do... Hmm. Anyway. Yeah, there's a lot of castles in Shogi. None of them strictly superior to all the rest. Although there is that one gentleman on YouTube who always plays the duck leg formation or strategy. You should check out what he does, because it's entertaining. And really, if this game isn't fun, then why play it? But, um... Okay. So that's a shape. That's definitely a shape. This might not be the most common shape ever. Mm -hmm. Let's see, we're building something. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, I guess this is like the flying duck leg strategy thing. Which is a bit special. Mm-hmm. I'm actually curious. So for all the handicaps they have in this game, uh, one of them they don't have is, like, thematic. Like, we're going to start you from this position, where your opponent's got everything very well advanced. Okay, lances. Fine. We could tuck the knights behind the lances here. Yeah, like... I'm curious. Obviously, Shogi is a tremendously complex game. I think you'd have to resort to starting studying this on a mini Shogi board first. But I'm curious how in mini Shogi you would evaluate such a complex thing. Yeah. Yeah, this is the giant duck. Strain. Uh, it's the weakness is the bottom of the castle. Um, in that there is no bottom, so, like, yeah, there's peace drops galore behind the castle. I think in mini shogi you wouldn't have as pronounced of a problem as you'd have in this nine by nine board. But yeah, I'm curious how you'd evaluate um, a space advantage on a smaller board. Because, yeah, on the large board, there are just lots and lots of piece drops that tend to ruin um, what would otherwise be considered a space advantage. On a smaller board, I, hopefully the effect is less pronounced. And you could actually try to evaluate a board instead of simulating 
here's all the possible positions that could occur. You could just look at a board and try to statically evaluate it. Anyway. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's a shape. So, yeah, we played some extremely aggressive moves. Got some fun. Well, yeah, she had started to castle. I did not get anywhere with castling. But um, ended up with a lucky center board checkmate um, because I had used my time, and eh, that's okay. This is a fun game anyway. It's a game we could all learn from or attempt to learn from. Yeah, well, that's one way to develop the pieces. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think what else there is to say. I've been thinking quite a while. I haven't really come up with a whole lot. Obviously, there was that opening fork that I would have had to drop back the bishop to defend my silver. I would have had to just let the rook promote, and that's fine. Not sure which way I would have castled there, but... Uh, I did already offer my comment about pushing my rook pawn too many times too quickly. Probably should have held that back until it was ready to advance in coordination with my bishop and silver. Yeah, that's a fun little shape here. Oh, it's a heart. Aw, check that out. Um... Somehow this game is blurring together in my mind with the previous game where I ended up doing some like bishop rook fork or king rook forks with the bishops and that's not what happened this game so um yeah let's just analyze locally here um try to bring some kind of conclusion to this as it is extremely late uh, yeah, so my rook got trapped here. And so I exchanged it off. Here I offered this exchange. My opponent doesn't really have anything better than accepting that offer. Oh, I see. My board is shared at this point. Um, let's see. So, yeah, I had offered this rook ex... Okay, so first of all, yes, I think that's right for her to do this because this is strong. And I doubled down on this and she correctly defended. There might have been other defenses too. Yeah, but this is all quite strong here. Um, right, I've been trying to win the knight and I had to exchange this off. And then this pinpoints, I mean, oh, okay, well, that's an interesting point, too. I hadn't thought about this. I don't know. Kind of. I thought the rook looked like this hitting right next to the king looks sensible, but maybe you're right. Um, actually, I wonder if a rook drop is just completely the wrong idea altogether. Um, what about like this? Does this just win on the spot? Um, yeah, so it could be this too. Oh, right, I'm sorry. Uh, during the game, I saw that. I forgot. That was a tactic. So yeah, here you'd have to block with something else. That's just a bit miserable, but okay. Maybe it's fine. I don't know. 
Um, yeah, I thought like I was perhaps not in the best position here. Um, yeah, so right, and then the smirk drop lands quite effectively. And so the only possible counter is to try to hold it so it doesn't like immediately promote and start taking all the pieces. Uh oh. Yeah, that works. Yeah, I guess that's probably the most effective solution here. Um and I don't know. Is there some tactic here somewhere? I'm still looking, but something like this. Yeah, I don't know. Like, it seems like every time the rook, every time Senta places the rook, something bad happens to Senta. Um, that, that can't be a coincidence, can it? Okay, we missed this. Um, but no, so I just like start with the pawns and then I lead in with the silver next and suddenly like I just keep winning tempo after tempo each time I do something like this. Um... Yeah, so, um, yeah, I think this is, I think Senta has gotten in more trouble than she deserves to be in here. Like, I don't know, this whole rook drop thing, tempting as it is, I'm not so sure. It feels like there's got to be something else going on here. Yeah. This seems more to the point. Yeah. Ah, right. So there's this too. <laughs> Wouldn't be nice to be able to do that. Um, but yeah, the difference in the player's positions is that uh, she's able to castle, and it's going to be very difficult for me to find a way to castle here. It's possible, but... Um, I mean, it's just going to take time, and I put no time into it. And my rook's trapped, and now my bishop's exposed. And, like, I've started an attack prematurely, so it's going to run out. Um, so, yeah, her position's just better. Yeah. So... Where did I even start on this? So this is a variation pawn drop 8, 7. Yeah, the pawn drop 8, 7 I think looks good. So I think, yeah, possibly that... Yeah, there's just probably a lot of candidates other than trying to immediately win material. Like, yeah, the rook drops are tempting, but spending a move or two in defense would probably serve Senta very well. Yeah. This option uh, looks uh, very cool. Or go to, to defend. So. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Just have to castle and, like, 
It's, <laughs> I've asked for all kinds of trouble here. And I'm going to get it. All kinds of trouble. And somehow, yeah, I just got my opponent very excited about what was going on in this game. Um, and I do kind of the same thing in Blitz Chess, where I'll just make sure both sides have many threats going on at the same time, and eventually somebody will forget about something. Um, we've kind of got the same principle here, where I am just so, so, so dead that, like, I don't know. Um, if the opponent can just focus for a few moments and calm down, they could pretty easily dispatch my nonsense. Uh, yeah, the only way I could cover most of these squares, half of them on the static rook file, the other half, like, uh, close to this king. I mean, I could either bring up this gold, but then I lose this rook file, or I could put my rook on this file, and then it has nowhere to go. Because my bishop's in the way. And even once the bishop moves, it's not like the rook's going to promote. So, yeah, this is just, like, very, very, very much in Senta's favor. It's going to take me some time to castle while my king's under attack, and I'm down a knight. Um, so, this is just very, at least I feel much more comfortable with Senta here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got one game in today. I played this absurdly aggressive attack in the opening. I guess I could give the hat back. Yeah, that's fine. Um... Yeah, so I have to play something like this, and, like, it's just sad for Gota. It's playable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah or at least it's maybe playable. Right. And I'm down a uh, knight. And castling for me will be slow. So, yeah. Uh, if Santa builds any castle, I'm in trouble. That's basically what it comes down to. <laughs> Just build any castle at all, and I'm in trouble. I'm in so much trouble because I played way too aggressively. So, yeah. Yeah, we did have some crazy double rook, central rook match some months ago. I got blown out there. It was pretty great. Um, so I guess, yeah, we're saying this is the rematch. And here... We both played some pretty silly stuff. I see. Standing by for rematch. Wow. Uh, what time is it? Yeah, I I have work in the morning. I can't rematch right now. Sorry. Um. <laughs> uh. Uh. Yeah, he enjoys his handicap games. Um. Yeah. Okay. He's being ambiguous, and having fun being ambiguous or whatever. But yeah, basically, as long as uh, Santa builds any castle, <coughs> pardon me. As long as any castle is built, Senta um, has a stronger position. It's maybe playable for me, although I'm down a knight. I've lost control of a lot of squares. Putting my rook in not a very favorable position. And so, yeah, if I just. It's going to take me some time to build a sensible castle since I started off with such a strange opening. 
but yeah, um, I guess that's the moral of the story. So, uh, yeah, hope folks enjoyed that, my attempt at an analysis. Um, yeah, I don't know what more I could say. I've been saying that quite a lot. Each time I try to analyze something briefly, we end up going very deeply into it, so I probably just need to stick to the generic guidance that we have there. And yeah, as long as Senta builds like any castle at all, this looks quite good for Senta. Um, I completely agree this rook drop is necessary to cover all these squares, because everything's weak, all these pawns are undefended, I switched from like trying to play central file to playing Odashino to playing Abisha and just um, needed to coordinate that a lot better. So that's how that works out.